Hello everybody and welcome to another episode on the General Life Podcast. So today we're going to talk about the universal basic income. So this is basically a follow-up video to my automation video. Because of automation, what's going to happen is, well, we're going to most likely lose most the majority of our jobs in this country if automation is accelerating at an exponential rate. So what, like, what are solutions for the people who are made unemployed? Well, one of the the solutions is the universal basic income or UBI to be short. So the UBI in a sh uh, so, so the UBI in a nutshell is just a guaranteed set income paid by the government to all its citizens, rich or poor, with no strings attached each month. So the amount should only be enough to to elevate a person out of poverty. Uh, UBI is a way of transferring the wealth of the country without total societal collapse. But um if we just gave out money, like free money, wouldn't people just stop working? I mean, that's the logic, right? I mean, if, if you don't need an income, you would be working. I mean, that's human nature. We're actually pretty lazy. So the theory is, if we introduce a, a UBI, people will just use the money for drugs, alcohol, or gambling. And they'll just pee it all away, you know? That's the fear. But uh, here's the thing, though. Isn't UBI just welfare, right? That's another um, misconception, I think. Because at first, thanks to my ignorance, I thought it was just another form of welfare. But as I dug deeper, it wasn't so. So the World Bank in 2013 ran a study to see if, if this was true or not. You know, see if people actually uh, use the money on drugs and alcohol and what have you. And they found out it wasn't true. But the opposite happened. Yeah, they spent it mostly on food and everything that they need to live a comfortable life. So, basically, the um, the stigma be like the stigma behind lazy, poor people using welfare, you know, using welfare just to spend it on drugs and alcohol. It, it's it is just a stigma, you know. That is not reality. And also in in the nineteen seventies, Canada did a um, like a test run of UBI and found out that only. 1% of people actually stop working and they only stop working is because they want to take care of their kids. I mean, that's natural, right? You want to spend time, more time with your kids. And on average, uh, recipients reduce their working hours by 10% and then use that time off to go back to school you know, to get more educated or to look for better work. That's natural. We always want to do better than what our situation is right now. We always wanted to improve on our situation. So uh, what are the benefits of, the, of having a UBI? Well, the UBI system encourages people to find work as $1,000 per month, but it could be at any, like any amount. It could be $2,000, $3,000, depending on your country. But let's just round it off to $1,000 per month to make it more um, digestible. So $1,000 per month will only cover living expenses, but it will leave very little else to have fun with. So in a way, it's only covering your expenses. It's not gonna cover, uh, let's say, your leisure time, like what you plan to do uh, during your leisure times. So UBI empowers the workers, um, as the workers are now in a better position to negotiate better working conditions, better pay, give them leverage. To you know, it gives them the power to say no to exploitive practices because businesses they do, some businesses do uh, take advantage. Of their workers some businesses don't some do but for those businesses who to actually take advantage of their workers now the workers have more leverage have more bargaining power as they have the ubi come on man if if you're going to exploit me i already have a backup so i'm just going to quit and find work elsewhere and if everybody is on the universal basic income everyone will be able to do that like look man if the working conditions are crap i'm not going to do it and then you can find someone else and maybe that person won't even do it because they have a UBI, they, everybody will be pretty much everyone, every worker will have more leverage over their labor. Uh, UBI also encourages entrepreneurship, as it gives people the chance to take take risks, take the necessary risks to succeed, but also gives a safety net in case they fail. I mean, there, I mean, there, there's no need to starve to death or to be homeless just because you failed. So, uh, so, so, so UBI in a way where it, it will encourage. Uh, more people to take risk. I mean, well, well, there's nothing wrong with risk. There's nothing wrong with taking a risk to benefit in the future. You know, if 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 there's a a chance that you might 
um, uh, get richer or better your circumstances, you go for it, right? If, if you have nothing to lose and, and the UBI gives you that, um, that safety net where uh, if you fail, it's all right. You won't starve. You'll be made, made homeless because let's face it, who wants to starve? Have you been hungry? You know, you know how much your stomach hurts when you're hungry or how bad it is when you're homeless and you're outside in the cold and sleeping under like a cardboard box? I mean, who wants to be homeless? No one wants to be homeless. Um, the next benefit, well, you have less health problems as you're not stressed. You know, you're not stressed about money. You're not stressed about scarcity. You're not stressed about poverty. You know, you're you're much healthier because you know, the stress releases a lot of cortisol and antihistamines, and it makes you it makes you makes you sick. Let's put it that way. Bottom line, it makes you sick. Okay, next point. Uh, you're free to pursue creative work. So with the UBI, you can reduce your working hours and use um, that time to pursue um, the arts or anything to your heart's content. You know, music, uh, painting, um, you know, traveling, like whatever. Uh, it will improve your, your relationships because uh, with more time spent with your loved ones, there's less tension at home, fewer domestic violence cases, less child abuse, financial stresses, etc., etc. Now, as I've stated in the previous uh, automation video robots are going to replace your jobs whether you like it or not because innovation AI, AI, um, innovation ai new technologies advancing it's expand it, it is expanding at a exponential rate so basically every year uh, tech, um, every year computers are getting more and more powerful so with more and more powerful computers you have more processing power you can create pretty much a terminator in a few years i mean the money has to come from somewhere as money doesn't grow in trees i mean um, that, that's the question that a lot of people ask because how, how's it gonna, how is UBI going, going to be funded? Well, you know what? Let's, um, because because UBI will create massive inflation, prices will uh, will rise and blah 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 blah. But all this is not true as um, a UBI is a transfer of of funds from one place to another. Hence, there's no inflation. You're not creating any new money. You're not inflating the the, the supply of money. So how will it be funded? Well, you know what? Let's have a little bit more fun with this. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm going to pretend that I'm the Prime Minister of Australia. And um, if I was the Prime Minister of Australia, this is how I would do it. Number one, robo-tax. Yep, I would introduce some sort of new tax. I would tax companies whom are, whom are implementing some, some kind of automation. And I'll call it the robo-tax. You know, my government will legit force all companies whom introduce robots into their company, like into their companies, uh, to pay a a progressive tax on every robot that they um, they purchase. So basically, the more robots you have, the more tax the company has to pay. It's fair, right? If you're gonna lay off a whole heap of people and place them with robots, all right, then I'm gonna tax those robots. All right, number two, no more Centrelink, no more Centrelink, and no more unemployment programs. I mean, these in these institutions offer programs that have a lot of strings attached to them. In my opinion, these programs do not work to help people find work, but it just hum humiliates them. I mean, th there's nothing right about making a person sit sit in a goddamn office looking for work when you can easily just do it at home. I mean, right? There's nothing right about making people jump uh, jump through hoops. There's nothing right about dealing with insensitive government staff looking at you with disgust every time you walk into a Centrelink building. So, you know, to hell with Centrelink and all their employees because my government needs the money to make Australia great again. So all of you, all you are fired. All right, number three, all, all politicians will take a pay cut, no exceptions. The days are long gone of making a living off the Australian taxpayer. All politicians' salaries are capped to $100,000 a year with no travel perks. No travel perks, no perks whatsoever, right? You love your country that much? You want to serve the people? Then pay your own way. And plus, $100,000 a year is a lot, man. Freaking, man, $100,000 a year. Tax-free, by the way. That's a lot of money. That's, what, $5,000 a week, I think? I think so. Uh, around there, around there, they're making a pretty good living. These goddamn politicians. Some of them are making more than hundred thousand dollars a year. Anyways, 
point number four. No more foreign aid. Sorry, world. We are, we are no longer taking care of, of starving African kids or Asian kids or any sort of kids. We got to take care of Australia first. Sorry. Number five, no more wars. Bring those troops home. You know, bring them home. Defend the country. No more wars. No more defending other people's interests. We're going to defend our interests. And don't say, oh, Reagan, we have troops in Iraq to stop IS and stop Islam. State. No, 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 no. Bring them home. Just bring them all home. You know, Australian troops have, we have, our troops have suffered enough overseas. Bring them home. Bring them home. So, will UBI work in Australia? Fucking who knows, man. Who, who knows if it's going to work or not? I don't want to make predict, like, like predictions on UBI because no one truly knows where it's going to, where it's going to lead. Because uh, it's, it's, it, it's not radical per se, but it's, um, it goes against, um, it goes against the world narrative right now. And um, yeah, but I'm sure our politicians will be against it. Let's put it that way, because they love the status quo. They love class warfare. You know, the Labour Party is for the is for the working people, while the Liberals they are uh, there for the rich end of Australia. But basically, it's just class warfare. We're all we're all Australians here. You know, it's these two parties have been advocating class warfare for the last God knows a hundred years. You know, it's it's not going to end. Is not going to end, but um, let me know what you think of UBI. Should we have one? Will it work? Personally, for me, I don't mind having a UBI in Australia because it will it will freaking benefit me as it gives me more time to work on my podcast, work on my fitness. I can eat better. I can eat better food. I, you know, I can make my own food. Yeah, so, so in my opinion, do I want a UBI? Yeah. Why not? 